With the color, texture, and sweetness of berries, bananas, watermelons, and mangoes, fruit has long been a treasured delicacy. During his earthly ministry, the Savior compared good fruit to things of eternal worth. He said, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. He encouraged us to gather fruit unto life eternal. In a vivid dream that we all know well in the Book of Mormon, the prophet Lehi finds himself in a dark and dreary wilderness. There is filthy water, a midst of darkness, strange roads and forbidden paths, as well as a rod of iron along a straight and narrow path leading to a beautiful tree with fruit that makes one happy. Recounting the dream, Lehi says, I did partake of the fruit. It was most sweet above all that I had ever tasted, and it filled my soul with exceedingly great joy. This fruit was more desirable than any other fruit. This precious fruit symbolizes the wondrous blessings of the Savior's incomparable atonement. Not only will we live again following our mortality, but through our faith in Jesus Christ, our repentance and keeping the commandments, we can be forgiven of our sins and one day stand clean and pure before our Father and His Son. As we have all learned, even after savoring the precious fruit of the restored gospel, staying true and faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ is still not easily done. We continue to face distractions and deceptions confusion and commotion, enticements and temptations that attempt to pull our hearts away from the Savior and the joys and beauties we have experienced in following Him. Just compare it to when you've gone without for a while of the, that delicious fruit, whether it be a, an actual fruit, food, whatever it might be, water, and you're just yearning for it and then you get it. It usually tastes quite a bit better at that moment than maybe if you had it day to day. And that's how I experienced the Spirit coming back. It was a flood, it was a rush of just pure joy and happiness. And that the atonement's real. I, I, I did fall away a little bit, I let myself slide. Um, but, but through the atonement, I could come back. I started reading a lot of opinions about not only the church, but about Christ himself. And just, it started to confuse me. I also had friends who were on the fence as well. I'm like, wow, I, I, I should make a decision. At that point, it said many of his disciples left. And he turned to his 12 and he said, will thou also go away? When I heard that in my mind, it was like, it, it hit me so hard, like he was saying it to me. Will you also go away? And then Peter's answer when he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And that was my answer. Although we need not fear, we are to be on guard. At times, little things can upend our spiritual balance. Please, don't allow your questions, the insults of others, faithless friends or unfortunate mistakes and disappointments to turn you away from the sweet, pure, and soul-satisfying blessings that come from the precious fruit of the tree. Keep your eyes and your heart centered on the Savior Jesus Christ and the eternal joy that comes only through Him.